museum. So um, we're just going to take a pause from the, the strife and the awful things that are happening in our world right now and have a few happy moments with you. So cheers. Yeah. Cheers. <clears throat> um, welcome to our home. We are not big time art collectors at all, but we love our art. It's sort of a mixture of uh, a travel log, tra chron chronicling our travels and um, supporting the arts in this wonderful place. Um, most of the art that we bought from Roanoke artists and regional artists has been bought in support of the museum or in support of other great causes. But we wanted to start right here because this piece is a piece that we bought, it was really our first piece we bought together. So it's the genesis of our collection. Uh, this is by Catherine Turner, Catherine Mapes Turner, who was born in Wyoming uh, on a dude ranch, which is how we met her. Um, she was educated at the Corcoran School of Art in DC, which I don't think exists any longer, and then earned a master's degree at UVA. So some good Virginia and DC connections. Um, this is um, San Miguel de Allende in Mexico, um, another one of our favorite places. But this is a special piece for us. Um, and so we're gonna just continue on in here. And where did you find that piece, Meg? Oh, when we were out in Wyoming at a dude ranch, we met Catherine and her family actually owns a gallery um, and they represent multiple artists. But uh, I looked it up today and the gallery's still there and actually she, they have even, they have a really robust collection. It's, it's quite beautiful. I don't know that we have any kind of a collecting philosophy other than if we, we like it and or we like the artists, we really try to add those things to our collection. So um, we, ha we don't have a, a large house and we do have a lot of windows, so we have, don't have very many walls. So we've, we've taken to sort of um, gathering some of our favorite pieces together to enjoy all at once. Um, this is sort of a combo of our whole collecting philosophy. This is a fabulous Mary Bullington, wonderful Roanoke artist. Um, I remember when I bought this, I think it was at Sidewalk Art Show. Uh, which sadly would have been last weekend, but happily has been rescheduled to August. So hopefully we can all gather there and support the museum. I think this is one of her first pieces of collage that where she featured people. And this is called Armenian Wedding. Um, I'm really drawn to faces. I don't know how you all feel about that. Uh, this piece here we bought at a tiny gallery uh, owned by an artist in Aix, France, in the south of France. And this piece, um, I found in an antique shop, so I don't know anything about it. It just appealed to me. Um, this piece here is a Tommy Lawson. Uh, I think we acquired this at one of the open studios yes. many years ago. Frank, do you want to talk about that one? Uh, no, I'm going to plead the fifth on this one. Um. <laughs> there was a story, though, right? There is a funny story. We were in the. We were in the. I think they were. There were several artists sharing a space at that time for the purposes of open studio and Tommy was there, but um, there were several paintings. Tommy is known for his nudes, as you can see, abstract nudes. And there were several paintings uh, that seemed to feature the same woman. And uh, <laughs> ironically, she was in there helping with the sales. And I actually kept sawing this uh, very stunning woman and I was looking at the painting and I would look at her again and I did that about a half dozen times <laughs> till it dawned on me it was one and the same and I probably turned 12 shades of red in the process. <laughs> yeah I have a very modest husband so that was not an experience he <laughs> forgot anytime soon after that. I think the X-rated part is that he actually made the connection before they shared that with you. <laughs> that, that's, that's maybe another whole series that we'll do later. <laughs> um, this piece we acquired in 2017 um, when we went to Cuba and uh, we actually met the artist. Uh, the last name is Flores, I think. Um, and he spoke to us. He had a whole series that looked along these same lines. It's very textural. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it's very colorful and textural on a white background. And he told us that, that most of his work was a commentary on um, immigration. 
And that is a, a subject that has a lot of depth, of course, and seriousness to it. But I do have to admit, when we had it framed and hung it up, it sort of reminded us of downhill skiers. So we have to, it depends on our frame of mind how we absorb this one. But another interesting story in bringing this home, you have to, or you did it 2017, I'm not sure what the situation between our country and Cuba right now with regard to art is, but you had to um, secure several stamps to take the piece out of the country. We had done all that and followed, we were in compliance with everything, but when we got to Miami, one of the customs officers, after we had cleared, he followed us and asked to see it again, and he scraped his fingernail on it and then licked his finger, and I think he thought maybe we were trying to transport drugs in some very odd form. Um, we assured him we did not. He still, I think, thought we were a little sketchy. I'm not sure why. Yeah. We, we love the peace and the memories of that trip. Exactly. So um, is, I think I saw, is Eric on this call? This is a, a piece by Eric Fitzpatrick, who I know everyone knows and loves. I believe Eric this is on the call, Meg. Great. Hi, Eric. I think this is from his series of left-handed self-portraits. Do I have that right? And that was another acquisition from Sidewalk Art Show. Maybe in a little bit later, we can, um, we can have Eric talk about that. Um, and lastly, before we leave this room, one other favorite piece is this Dorothy Gillespie Starburst, um, which was a birthday gift to me a couple years ago. And I know many of you know and admire and love the work of Dorothy. And I believe that, the, that her work is featured right now at the museum. So when it reopens, we'll all get to enjoy her centennial celebration there. And we actually have two exhibitions right now of Dorothy Gillespie, um, both uh, on loan from um, different institutions, but also we have a number of um, collectors in our region that have loaned their works, including the Tensors, who are also on the call. That's great. I can't wait to see that. And we did hear the exciting news today. I hope that things will continue as they are, that the museum will open for weekends, weekend visits starting in early July. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I've really tried to get Frank as excited about art. He has a, an act, a very excellent collection of sports memorabilia and, and vintage military things downstairs, but I think he's starting to really love um, this type of art as well, especially when we can link it to some travels or good memories or experiences. Yeah, so, so this piece, Megan, I had gone a couple of years ago to uh, drive around the coast of Maine, and we spent a few days in Bar Harbor and Acadia National Park, and um, and and that's what this uh, painting depicts. And so I went last fall to buy Meg a uh, Christmas gift at uh, Lindor Gallery in downtown Roanoke, and to buy another Dorothy Gillespie, which I did, but. While I was there, I fell in love with this and decided why not buy myself a Christmas gift. Um, so I purchased this as well and just absolutely love it. And um, it, it's a lot of fun. It brings back a lot of wonderful travel memories. And it changes really, really interestingly <laughs> in the light as the light progresses through the day. And another wonderful gift that I have, I believe maybe Betty is on the call as well, is a Betty Branch Nest. It's one of my favorite pieces that Frank bought at one of her Christmas open houses, I believe. And um, this piece just gets better and better as the patina ages. And it, I just think the texture is so beautiful and the natural aspect of it. There's a theme going here. I struggled for several years what to buy Meg for Christmas and birthday and Mother's Day. And now I know it's hard. <laughs> it was a safe choice, right? <laughs> <laughs> And we will be having a Betty Branch retrospective in the spring. Oh moment. yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know if the light and the glare is gonna allow you all to see. Holly, help me out. I can't see your face. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a piece by Jerry Bannon. I'm sure many of you saw the exhibition at the museum several years ago. Um, and I just got to know Jerry during the time that that exhibition was hanging. And I know many of you know him as well as his wife, Betsy. And I was so fascinated by the process of this. It's sort of, it's a still life, harkens to the tradition of memory, Mark, um, memory, help me out, Holly. I'll get it in a minute, but it's, it is vellum. He sets up this still life in his studio, incredibly detailed pieces from nature, as well as some other 
uh, elements. And then this is vellum and completely created using a Bic pen. And if you can see the color, it is much redder than it was when we first acquired it. It started out black, but that's the oxidation of the ink on the vellum. And it's just, you can look at it a million times and see something different every time. It's really special to me. It's interesting too, when we had the exhibition, he works off of um, tableaus. And so he actually sets up that little scene and then, and then paints it, or I mean, not paints it, draws it. And I think now he's doing some series with birds and the, the detail work is just amazing. So that's why this piece is in this hallway to try to protect it somewhat from the light. So um, here we have another little collection of things that I just think they kind of live happily together. But this piece, this here, this abstract here was, I actually found it in a junk shop. I don't even remember where, but it was just a raw edge canvas stapled to a stick. It wasn't even a finished stick or a piece of ball sweater. And it was literally like a stick you would pick up in your yard. Um, so I have no idea of the history of it, but I just have always really liked it. And this piece is by a Polish artist from the 50s, I believe. I've tried to research it. There's some contradictory information. The last, the signature is Tovar. I've tried to research it, but it's slightly different what I can find to what was labeled in the antique shop. But I, again, I go back to, oh, I'm always attracted by faces. That one looks a lot like in that first central room that we were in, Meg, the one that you got from um, the antique store with kind of yeah. the black eyes. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know what it is about faces that really uh, fascinate me, um, but um, so we just have, um, we've just given you a little overview of the things that kind of make us really happy and we really enjoy um, living with our art and, um, and again in here in this corner there's a Nan Mahone, I know you all know, um, really integral in the plein air movement and um, And then this is a, a watercolor by uh, ZL Fang uh, from Radford. I think the detail and the coloring for a watercolor is, is amazing. Is that also a sidewalk art show piece? That is a um, CYP art show piece. Um, again, another great place where so many of our generous artists um, unite to celebrate and support a great cause. Meg, where is the, where is the artist from? He's from Radford. He actually, I believe, is an art professor. He and his wife both, and they live in, in the Radford area. That's beautiful. And, and then this- I asked about Sidewalk Art Show is he actually won Best in Show, I think, two or three years ago. You know, and I think I neglected to say it, the piece above the, the staple to a stick abstract is by his wife, I believe, um, a very talented couple. But um, yeah, this piece is incredible. Watercolor to me, just the, the technique eludes me because it, it just seems amazing to get this level of crispness. And then this sea captain or um, old writer or whatever, I don't, again, it's something I found in an antique shop. It just appealed to me again to the faces. So we thank you so much for taking the time to share some of our pieces with us and we if you have any questions we'd love to ask and we'd love to hear from you too about your um your collecting that type of thing and i, and I will share one uh, lesson we learned together we were both uh, a couple of years ago in lewis delaware and went into an antique shop and uh, we both went our separate ways as we usually do when we go to an antique shop and that night um we were discussing and we both uh, mentioned a piece of art that we loved, that we had uh, each seen, and we decided we were going to go back and purchase it the next day, and we were very excited, and we went back the next morning, and it had been sold. So we learned if you see something, you love it, buy it. Yeah, it was, I still, that one still hurts. It was a 19th century oil painting of a young boy in a sailor outfit. It probably had been a young hand on a, on a, 
a seagoing vessel. It was pretty special, and I'm sure we weren't the only people that figured that out. So that was a mistake. Missed it by a few hours. Yeah. What yeah. Did we do?